This video is to help you piece together sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So it's part of retrieval practice. It's a revision video. You have to watch the other videos to know the content. This is to piece it all together or to revise it. So we're going to summarize the events, break it up into stages and tell the story. So start at the beginning, know how to label the flower and what each part is for, particularly the sepal, don't forget that. So the carpel is the female part, it's made up of the stigma, the style, the ovary and inside is the ovule and the stamen is the male part, it's made up of the anther and the filament. So next we're going to discuss pollen grains and know that they're produced in the anther in those chambers there known as pollen sacs. Now go into detail about how pollen grains are formed. You should know the details of this, watch the other video if you don't. It all starts off with those microspore mother cells undergoing meiosis followed by mitosis to give you that pollen grain with the tube nucleus and the generative nucleus, but no male gametes until that generative nucleus undergoes mitosis. So next is female gamete formation, the formation of the embryo sac, and it's inside the embryo sac where those female gametes will be formed. So it started with the megaspore mother cell undergoing meiosis, and remember one remains and undergoes mitosis three rounds of it. So we end up with an embryo sac with an egg cell and two polar nuclei. So now we have the female gametes formed, let's go back to pollination. This is transferring the pollen grain from the male part, the anther, to the female part of the flower, the stigma of the carpal. This can either be done by the wind or it can be done by animals, in particular insects. There's self-pollination and there's cross-pollination and know the difference between the two. So the pollen grain is landed and the pollen tube controlled by the tube nucleus is formed and the generative nucleus undergoes mitosis in this to form the male gametes. These make their way into the embryo sac. So when these male gametes make their way into the embryo sac inside the alveole, there is two fertilizations. It's called double fertilization. The first forms the diploid zygote and the second, the triploid endosperm. So next we have seed and fruit formation. Inside a seed is the embryo plant and cells that nourish it. So we have the embryo plant developing from the zygote and we have the nourishment coming from the triploid endosperm. The coating of the seed, the testa, forms from the integuments, the ovule walls and the ovary becomes the fruit. An embryo plant has a part that becomes the shoot, the plumule, the radical which forms the root and either one or two seed leaves called cotyledons. So there are two types or two groups of seeds. Endospermic seeds do have an endosperm and store their food there. Non-endospermic seeds do not and they store their food in cotyledons. So following on from this is seed and fruit dispersal. So it's really important that the seed gets away from the parent plant to avoid competition. The wind can carry it, or sometimes water can be one means, like in coconuts. Also animals, and also some plants can do it themselves, like pea pods exploding. So following dispersal, the seeds enter dormancy. Dormancy is this period of reduced metabolic activity where the seed undergoes no growth and it's kicked off by a loss of water, the seed losing its water. Dormancy is maintained by seeds having a tough testa and the presence of growth inhibitors and there are important advantages to it as well. For example, it can ensure a seed bank and it also gives the embryo plant time to mature. So following dormancy is germination, the regrowth of the embryo plant following dormancy and you need three factors, water, oxygen and a suitable temperature and you must know why you need each one. Germinating seeds require a lot of energy and raw materials so food reserves must be broken down, there has to be digestive activity in the seed and so there must be a lot of respiration going on as well. So one of the questions you're often asked is why does the dry mass of the seed decrease? It's usually down to respiration. So this was an outline on how you study this topic. Stick to your revision plan. I hope everything is going well. Best of luck.